Zion Church. Some need to hear the word Baptist. Some need to hear the word Pentecostal. Some need to hear the word Baptocostal. We are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? When brothers and sisters, amen, come from the same uh, bloodline, and we come from the bloodline of Jesus, I said the bloodline of Jesus, then we count ourselves as brothers and sisters. Am I right about it? Come on, let's put our hands together. Matthew 28. I'm going to go on with Matthew 28. In the 16th verse, then the 11 disciples, Matthew 28, 16, they went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Yes, sir. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, somebody need to say that with me. Lo, say it again. Lo, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Let the church say Amen. You may be seated. And I want to talk with you today. Concerning this scripture, we have some of our older members in here today who understand what it means to make bread instead of having money to run to the store and buy bread. And sometimes when they gathered up the material to make some homemade bread, I won't ask you to raise your hand, but it's it's one or two of sisters in here that know how to make homemade bread. They don't have to sweat when uh, Sam's and Kroger's closes. Talking about we ain't got no bread. Well, I need to tell you that when you come up through hard times, you learn to go on low. I wish I had somebody. I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. Matthew 28 says the very first word is go. Amen. And how we're going to go? We're going on low. That means that we don't we don't always have what we want to have. Sometimes life comes at us and we can't pick our parents. We can't pick our social situations. We can't pick the situations in life that are the plum. Sweet situation. Uh, but sometimes we just have to learn to go on low. Now this text that's get, given to us today is known as the Great Commission. It occurs after the resurrection as Jesus speaks to his 11 disciples, giving them their final assignment. He told them to get the word out about salvation. Get the word out about redemption. To the entire world. And then go. Mm -hmm. yeah. On low. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> baptize believers. Yeah. And then teach them the way of life prescribed for a Christian. Yeah. While Jesus gave his disciples a mission, he did not give them any special equipment. Jesus. Uh -huh. Except his words of promise. And this commission includes two important words. Go huh. and low. As Jesus gave his disciples the command to go, it included all the hardships and sacrifices that go would entail. Right. Right. He gave them a low, which was a promise of his perpetual presence 
with them regardless of their circumstances or peculiar situations. God knows what you're going through. He says, go. Even if you have to go on low. Somebody say, go on low. Look at somebody and tell them, go on low. The church today still has only one mission. And that's to spread the good news about the kingdom of God yes. to all the world. It has a mission to preach, to reach, and teach the world about Jesus yes. through the administration of the word and through the example of our Christian compassion. Uh -huh. Number one, preach the word. Yes. The church has a responsibility to provide for the preaching of the word of God. Yes. That's our number one responsibility is to preach the word of God. At home it's done through providing for ministers who preach the word and declare the word. The responsibility for preaching of the word goes beyond the home front and it goes even beyond the missionary field in distant places. God has allowed me after I prayed about it and preaching in the states of the United States and I've asked God I Ask him, I said, God, help me to obey Matthew 28. Yeah, right. Let me go into all the world. Right. And one too many years after that, while helping another preacher with a broke down automobile, uh -huh. and his car got towed and put into uh, a locked up place. And then he asked me, uh, another preacher, Reverend John McKinney, right. and he said, could you help me go get my car? Uh -huh. And then to get it out of uh, storage, right. because they towed my car, mm -hmm. and I didn't have enough money to get it out. Uh -huh. Well, because of my teaching of our previous pastor, my dad, yeah. uh -huh. Andy Staples Jr., uh -huh. yeah. he said, the poor you have with you always. Oh, Sometimes the poor is even the preacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to understand yeah. that uh, sometimes the preacher's car breaks down. Yeah. And somebody got to have enough faith in the Lord Jesus Christ to provide the preacher's car. I wish I had somebody. I didn't say provide a Bentley. I didn't say provide a BMW. But you ought to be able to help Somebody get four wheels yes, and a dependable motor yes, so that the word of God be not hindered. Yes, Wish I had somebody. Yes, Let me finish. We went over to the garage way out town, out of town, yeah. outside of St. Louis. We went in there, got his car, right. came back, he thanked us, we went to dinner. Then we heard from him months later. Uh -huh. We got an invitation to come and preach in Hanau, Germany. Uh -huh. And he paid the way. Uh -huh. I, I tell you, uh -huh. the Bible says, be careful yeah. Yeah. when you entertain strangers. Yeah. Yeah. For you entertain angels uh -huh. unaware. Uh -huh. Angels sometimes have bodies yeah. that you can see. Sometimes they are moving around in the spirit realm. When my daughter was talking about that truck that almost T-boned, it, all it takes is one little finger of an unseen angel to push against the truck. And that truck will move on out of the way. I wish I had somebody. If God can take the jawbone or an ass, the jawbone of a donkey, and he can tell the angels that pick up the jawbone and go down in the valley and kill 186,000 overnight. That's one angel, y'all. Yet God loves you so much. He surrounds you with angels all 24 hours a day. You are surrounded by angels. Unless anything harmful can come upon you. Somebody ought to know how to praise him in here. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Preach the word. Preach the word.
preach it. Even though we have modern technology, there are people that have never heard the word of God. When I went down into uh, Haiti to preach the word, I cried for two days. All because I've never seen such poor people. Little children that never were allowed to go to school. Why? Because they had other brothers and sisters that were going to school. The father and the mother had to make the decision which child to send to school. They don't have a welfare system. There's no such thing as food stamps. No such thing as a government check. You have to get up out of bed and go work. Then you go get your fruit and then you trade it with somebody that's got some fish. So that both of you all can have a balanced diet. And if you don't work, you don't eat. And that goes on from day to day. These people don't have clothing. They don't have any kind of support. And I want you to know that you don't know what poor is until you go to Haiti. I wish I had somebody. After we preach, we have to provide for the preaching of gospel on foreign shores. South America, Europe, Africa, all over the world. The second part of going low is reaching the lost. The church has a responsibility to reach out to those who are lost and hopeless. While our mandate to preach extends both far and wide, we can never forget to reach begins at home. We can bring in other people from other countries, bring them to Jesus, but we've missed it all if we don't get our children saved. Daddy, I'm going to talk to you now. You're the father of a precious child. Yeah. What kind of life would you have to watch your child grow up and end up in hell? Yeah. I want you to know he's going to look you in the eye one day and say, why didn't you tell me, daddy, about hell? Yeah. When you were telling me how to hold a basketball. Yeah. You were telling me how to hold a football. Yeah. You were telling me how to run track. You were telling me all kinds of things, but you never told me, don't go to hell. Don't go to hell. Mother, what kind of child are you raising now? Is your child heaven born or is she hell bound? I want you to know that God's going to hold you accountable. We have to reach the lost through education. We have to preach the Bible and teach the Bible to help with crime prevention. We have to help children who are the victims of a helpless society. We have children having children that don't know how to be mothers and fathers that the Lord is pleased with because nobody taught them and they don't know how to raise nobody else. Then finally, I can hear the grandmothers of the church singing. If I can help somebody as I pass along. If I can cheer somebody with a word or a song. Then I'll know that my living is not in vain. Then thirdly, he says to teach them. Preaching and reaching are the lost are two of the elements of the command go. There's also the command to teach them whatsoever things I've told you. This introduces the third missionary objective of the church. Those who come out to church must be taught what Jesus wants them to do and trained so they can reach others themselves. 2 Timothy 2.15 reminds us to show to study, to show thyself approved of God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. One thing for sure, brothers and sisters, you got to study God's Bible. You can't just read it in between some of your TV commercials. You got to study the Bible. It didn't just say read it. It said study it. The word pupil means in the teacher's handbook, it means one who attends. 
students. The word student means one who studies. I wonder what category would you be in in the schoolhouse of God? Are you a person that attends church? Are you a student of the Bible? I want to know I got one more thing to tell you. He said there is no goal without the word low. Today there are many that are striving to carry out this mission. One truth that every saint who steps out on God's word, it has a word go. It's always a low. He says 